Hi, good afternoon. My name is Milan. This is Peter. And we're from the Gorilla Guide team. Hopefully, you're enjoying our nice little logo that ChatGPT very nicely made for us. <laughs> so, one of the big issues I face as a clinician you can be there on a night shift, it's three in the morning, you need access to a bit of information. You remember reading it once on a guideline in your trust in intranet, or that one nice guideline you read at something, but you just can't find it now. So how amazing would it be to have a quick search function to go through that? And one tool that's particularly good for that is the new large language models, like ChatGPT that we've available now. Tired doctor looking for uh, notes. But one of the issues we face is that or a better term, confabulate. We can't necessarily trust the sources of the information it's getting for us, right? It's a source of, unknown, of software of unknown properties. So the idea is that we can feed in uh, bits of information that we have. We can feed in the, uh, the notes, our internal documents, our own guidelines to build a chatbot that can then search. But the beauty is it can reference that for us. So we built this little web interface. We'll show you a demo afterwards. Uh, and let me give you a quick example. So here's a very specific niche example of a baby with a suspected heart defect. On the right is our example having uh, prompted ChatGPT and our chatbot with our own internal guidelines versus the standard answer. This gives us a much more nuanced uh, guideline of what to do. It gives you there to references that you can then go and see. Uh, and uh, even gives you links to local information about who you need to speak to next. Quick uh, summary of how you can then start to see the referencing to the documents that you've submitted for it. The other beautiful thing about this is it can pull in bits of local knowledge you wouldn't otherwise get. So for example, it might give you the phone numbers for the next people to speak to or the email addresses for the next people you speak to for places that don't necessarily have an easily accessed central repository. So there's two ways we can see this going forwards. It might be very nice, for example, within a hospital. We've all used hospital internet systems. Sometimes they're not clean, they're not tidy. There's someone that rotates through a lot of hospitals. It takes them time to get familiar. We could fill, we could index all of those documents, all of those pages within a hospital's local intranet and build a Teams app so that you can have a chat spot within Teams which most hospitals can point you to where you need to go. You could expand this further and take large compendiums of guidelines, like the NICE guidelines, and rapidly search through those. Within a specific hospital, departments could coordinate specifically what they allow to go into it. And uh, you can structure these bots in such a way that uh, you minimize these hallucinations. So this is the way I see this potentially going. So we can do a very quick demonstration now of the... You've got five seconds. So we've got a QR code, you can sign up quickly, uh, and you can interact with one of the bots we've made specifically for neonatal. Quick. Thank you. So sorry. If people sign up, is that the demo? Yeah. Okay. So people can demo themselves. Here to create a quick account, and it sends you an email to store your session. Yeah, you need to a. The one we've given you access to is a limited version, just for a smaller set of neonatal documents and training. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Um, prompts are super important with Gen AI. Um, I wondered what you thought about in terms of how to make those prompts um, as consistent and as good as possible uh, for the clinicians who might be using this tool. Yeah, so we had a think about this and we tried a few different things. Uh, I think one of the things it does take is a bit of experimentation. We found, for example, you could put in, uh, I have a page with this for the next step, and it was quite good at giving you a summary. If you ask a very vague question, it tends to just give you a not very specific answer. You have to be very specific with that, but I can never practice with like any new software system. So much for your presentation. You talked about um, a process of curating what kind of guidelines would feed um, this bot. Who do you see being responsible for doing that? And what's the process for that? What's the frequency at which this is being done? So it depends on who's running it and supervising it, right? If this is something you want to use in a local department, uh, the, a local 
2014. It might be someone internally there. Anytime you update a trust guideline, you could potentially pull that trust guideline again into a database that feeds this. If you're doing national that searches the NICE set of guidelines and updates every time NICE updates their guidelines, so it uses only in-date guidelines from the NICE website. Thank you. You might have just touched on this in the last one, but um, in terms of updating and up-to-date guidelines, would you then have to rerun and re-learn, re reteach your model each time so that it's not using or integrating out of date? Um, well, practice. So we to do this, we have to index all the documents that we feed into this. There is a way to add in additional documents into that index. I don't know, Peter, do you know specifically about removing documents from that? Too much time. Thank you. Oh, we're out of time. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm just going to ask if you permission. I was going to ask, um, how would your system uh, ma manage conflicts between national guidelines and local guidelines? Would it be able to tell you what to do in that scenario? So, if your local guidelines were opposed to the national guidelines, which would take priority? So in, in that case, it would most likely pull up both of them, and it would give you the option. Yeah. Comes down to the, it would present both. Good answer.